So, without further ado, uh, you've all received a message from your fixers saying, get to SeaTac Airport to the private uh, side of the airfield as fast as possible. That message came in around 3.15 in the morning. So, starting with Ringside, if you would be so kind to give us a description and let me know how you are getting to the airport. All right, well, Ringside looks exactly like she does in the picture, except that shirt, instead of having nothing on it, is the rock blood shirt that's specifically for orcs. Um which uh, she wears, despite being an elf, of course, because uh, orcs because orcs are just because orcs are just cooler. The only downside they have is they can't be jacked for three hundred years, you know. Um, <laughs> and and she's probably going to leave the gym because you know that's where that's where you got to get jacked. And uh, she'll throw. Uh, she has two vehicles. She has her troll hammer that she actually rides around on because you know that's a real you know that's a real bike. You know we're not we're we're not doing another Suzuki Mirage bullshit. We got we got real bikes for real for real elves. Uh, and we're going to have all our illegal crap in the, um, in, uh, the gopher smuggling compartment. It's, and it's like going to be grid guided, you know, like a street beside us. And, uh, before we get to the airport, uh, we can move the bag containing our crime wave and a lot of ammunition, uh, broken down, of course, uh, into the bike itself, because this is a huge bike that has more body than an America car somehow. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, that's just how, that's just how, what, that's just how troll bikes roll. Rule number one, uh, don't ask questions about mechanics. Just roll with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and she would just pull right up to the, uh, to the, uh, to the gate unless, unless she gets pulled over somewhere flying her criminal sin. Uh, where is she coming from? Up, uh, uh, Piaup City. Eh, not that far. <sighs> All right. Well, given the early hour. Uh, as you pull up, there is a lone guard in a little shack. And he is just standing there, and he has an actual physical clipboard. And he sees you roll up. <sighs> Going for a private flight, ma'am. Fuck if I know. They told me to show up here. <sighs> Which pad are you going to? And he's giving you that look like, yeah, you belong here, sure. I believe it was four, right? I'm 40, sorry. I 41H. 41H. I'm sorry. I only remember the four. I apologize. Uh, she she'd get like DNI stare for a second because she doesn't remember this shit, uh, you know because because this number doesn't involve gains and so it's hard to keep track of that in your head on a regular basis. Forty one inch uh, thoughts. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, and so she'd get DNI for a sec and then uh, and I go forty one H. That's what they said. Uh, the moment you say that, his expression changes, and he. Like the with a clatter, the clipboard goes down to his desk. Uh, yes, ma'am. My apologies, ma'am. Uh, right this way, ma'am. And he will tap something in AR, and the big swing arm, the boom arm in front of the uh, the gate will open up, and you will see an AR indicator pop up, and it will lead you towards landing pad forty one H. All right. Well, she will immediately ignore him the second that opens, uh, because uh, this man is not jacked, right? Uh, he's he's not quite Paul Blart. But he's not quite like the uh, the the nerdy guy who was part of AV Club. Like he's halfway between pudgy and just soft. Oh God, what a loser! All right, we're gonna drive away as fast as possible. We're 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 gonna make sure that we kick up as much random debris from the rear wheel of this massive bike because like a troll sized bike must be hilariously huge. Uh, <laughs> and, and drive over to the uh, to the hangar. All right, uh, Ben, give me a description and how are you getting there? Pen is about five feet tall. She looks pretty much exactly like my icon on Roll20. Uh, but she is wearing a slightly tattered old long coat that doesn't sit right on her shoulders because one of them is lower than the other. Or angled slightly. Uh, she is going to be taking public transit because she has no vehicle. Oh, God. And you, you do have that as a part of your lifestyle? Uh, well, she has a low and a high. So, actually, she might indulge and call a cab of sorts. With a high, with a high you can get a sky cab. Yeah, that, that would actually be included with a high oh. lifestyle. Travel by, oh. rigged, travel by rigged wireless off VTOL. The only way runners who are not runners anymore would ever travel. <laughs> she'll just okay she'll call one of those up then and also make sure that she packs plenty of fruit from the greenhouse for fellow runners because that is her habit 
Well, it will take a total of 18 whole minutes for a VTOL to show up. It will land in a gentleman wearing an actual chauffeur's uniform, the, the black coat with the hat, the white gloves. He will get out of the VTOL. He will walk around. The hatch will lower, and he'll walk up to you and say, Good morning, ma'am. May I, do you have any bags I can carry for you? Uh, no, thank you. Right this way, ma'am. Where's 41H? That way? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. And she, where's 41H? That way, right? Uh, yes, we will, we will take you to the, uh, the, the private side, of course, of Seattle-Tacoma Airport, ma'am. The flight will take approximately 13 minutes. Oh. Okay. She's so not used to being treated nicely. Uh, once you get in there, this is a very, very lavish VTOL, uh, just quite fitting to the lifestyle, if you will. Uh, they will instruct you how to buckle yourself in, and of course there's no chafing edges on these seat belts. They're very much rounded and smooth, and it's quite comfortable. Uh, you're offered some fresh juice for your flight, and it takes exactly 13 minutes for the VTOL to zip into SeaTac Airport, and they will land at the private strip, and as the chauffeur will come around to your side again, and he will escort you out of the VTOL, uh, he will let you know, ma'am, I have taken... Uh, all concerns to to make sure transport, uh, some ground-based transport, is coming to to take you to your final destination. Oh, thank you. That's quite kind. Um. And it's only about a minute later, but a a golf cart with a very sleepy-looking. You would guess he was a teenager. Maybe he just has a young face, uh, but wearing a uh, like a bag loader's outfit with the vest and the the flashlight with the cone on it. Uh, he'll show up in a golf cart and very awkwardly stand there. Um, I was told to drive you, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll be going to 41H. Um, Please and thank you. 41H, ma'am, that's... And he will reach up with one hand and he'll point at the helicopter that's on the next landing pad. You're you're on forty two H, ma'am. That's right next to you. Um, oh. Okay. And he will gesture for you to get into the little golf cart. Oh. Okay. Um. Actually, I think I'll just walk. Thank you. He just looks at you and just shrugs and gets back on the golf cart and leaves. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Hammerheads. Tell me what you look like. How are you getting there? Uh, let's see. This is an airport, right? So let's go with let's go with the Mortimer of London Argentum coat. And he'll be wearing that and carrying a briefcase on his rather silly Dodge Scoot. And he is driving from Redmond. There's a possibility that someone will try and mug him on the way. On, on the way. I'm, I'm sorry. Just the the visual of a, of a troll of Hez's size on a little Dodge Scoot carrying a briefcase in one hand and riding with the other is just that's just a beautiful image. <laughs> uh, tell you what. Go ahead and give me an edge roll. Oh, boy. Oh my God. Oh God. Why? Why? We got an elf on a troll bike and a troll on a scoot. <laughs> that's that's a mage bike to you. Uh, so as you, as you're coming through Redmond and you're approaching the the border crossing to Bellevue, uh, there are a couple of idiots who don't have shirts on and they're holding actual wooden torches that are that are on fire. If you had to guess, you would say it was pallet wood. And there there's two of them that you can see, and they're wearing like uh, hockey style masks, and they're blocking the road. Uh -huh. Uh, Hammer would run them over if he had a bigger vehicle, but he doesn't. Well, as you approach, they'll point at you with their burning sticks, and they'll say, You gotta pay the toll to use our road! Uh, Hammer is going to say, No, I'm the troll. You pay the toll. That's not how this works. We're not under a bridge. We're on a road. That makes it our turf. You, and he'll look to the other one and kind of nod like that. That's how this works, right? And he'll look back and go, "Yeah, you pay the toll." Is there any law enforcement around? This is the Redmond Barons. So no, 
How close to me are they? Eight or nine feet, give or oh. take. Well, that's within my reach. Let's split the die pools. All right, let me roll some dice on my side, and you roll some dice on your side. And you said you're splitting, or are you just doing one? Splitting. Uh, maybe my roll 20 is frozen. I only see one roll from you. Uh, it might be. I rolled two. Oh, there we go. Okay. Just popped up. The second one with four successes. Mm-hmm. Well, both of them failed their surprise checks. Because they weren't really expecting the troll in a suit carrying a briefcase to, to, to be violent toward them. Uh, so, yeah. Well, you... Uh, uh, <laughs> would you like to describe well, what you do to these poor, these poor tiny humans? Yeah, Hammer... Uh, does kick one of them into the other and send them tumbling a good ways. Because that's like... 18 stun to the first one and 20 to the second. Well then. You did not kill him, but they are both unconscious. Okay. Hammer will get back on his bike and continue. Well, it's a rather uneventful after that. Uh, you get to the, uh, you see the uh, the guard in the little security booth. He's a pudgy looking human. Uh, the the boom arm is just still is still lowering. There's a bunch of dust kicked up in the air as you approach, and he'll look at you and he just like does that full body start because he didn't hear the uh, the scoot pulling up the modern of electric motors that it is. And he'll look down at his clipboard and he'll look at you and, um, uh, good morning, sir. Hi. Looking for forty one H. Oh God! Of course you are. Um, oh, and he jabs and pokes an AR, and an indicator will pop up if you have a DNI active right now, uh, leading you mm -hmm. towards forty-one H as the boom arm raises. I don't have direct, but I do have image link in my contacts. Yeah, that would pick it up. Thank you. Of, of course, sir. And he Happy looks day. like he's he wants to salute, but he's not really sure what to do. And that leads us to D-Boss. Yep. He's going to be driving out from uh, Southern Tacoma, or not Southern Tacoma, just from Tacoma, on his uh, Horizon Double, to the Double uh, Revolution monowheel. Is the, so, uh, the Double. Yeah, it just means double. Double. Yeah. Uh, enclosed. He has the enclosed sights on it and everything. Um, so we drive that up to the up to the uh, gate where it needs to go and inquire in about 41. Well, as you get there, you can just see the back of a very large man with big horns riding away on a very manly Dodge Scoot with a brief cave in his hand. And the security right. guard will look at you and he'll point at the departing troll. Are, are you with that, him, sir? Got it. I, 41H. Of, of course. Yep. Oh, God. And an AR well, indicator will pop up, leading the way. Well, I certainly hope I was not, I'm not the most normal person coming through. I'm not the most weirdest person coming through here. I look pretty goddamn normal. <laughs> you just drive on. So, you make it in there, and sitting at 41H. Now, the way, I don't know how much experience... Everybody here has with private airfields. I've been to a few of mine, a few in California and one in Colorado. Uh, they're kind of fancy affairs. Like it's it's really a cool feel. You go in and there's there's like the private landing pad, or where a lot of people will stage an airplane, or they'll land a helicopter or, or whatever their vehicle choice is. And for the really fancy ones, they have a hangar directly behind it, like a giant standalone garage. Uh, now, the the regular run-of-the-mill people, it's like row housing. All of the hangars are connected to each other, so they share a wall. Uh, the really fancy ones, though, they are completely standalone for privacy issues. And the one you were looking at is a standalone hangar. Sitting on the pad in front of it is a rather large helicopter. It is the uh, Stallion WK-4. Nice. So as you get there, you see there's a total of four runners standing in front of this uh, this beautiful helicopter. What do you guys do? Uh, we're all standing here? Yes, sir. Well, Ringside's going to look at uh, Hammer and greet him in Orzet. In 
in in very good or that the sound the 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 uh, tusk sound even sounds pretty close to the real sound <laughs> as she, as she oh. takes her bag holy Never shit that. god damn that's wow. a goal yeah <laughs> well, uh, Ringside is pretty sure that Hez is a real troll because he responds to you in Perfect Orzette as well. Yeah. Good to see there's some actual other fucking muscle on this job. Last one, I had someone who couldn't even, who couldn't even climb a fence. Uh, wouldn't be a problem if we did. Go right through it. <laughs> this bump. Fist bump. That's right. I thought our set was the orc language. It is. It's trolls too. <laughs> trolls too. See, trolls don't get their uh, own language. They just have to take it from the orcs and share. It, you guys stand there for only for about three or four minutes, and then the door to the hangar it starts to to slide open. Uh, big hangers they don't open up because of the weight of the door. They actually go. They split at the middle, or they open at one side. This one splits in the middle, so it opens left to right. And it is ridiculous the amount of light that starts spilling out of this thing. Uh, especially given that it's just a few minutes before 4 a.m., so the sun is nowhere close to being up. And all of this beautiful white light just spills out, illuminating this helicopter. And it is it is clean. Like, it is shiny, polished, and waxed. And as the door opens up, there is what is very clearly a woman wearing a very severe business suit, like the skirt suit kind of outfit. And she has about half a dozen armed guards that you can see flanked out on either side of her. Okay. And she will look at the four of you just very slowly left to right before she walks out of the hangar and toward the landing pad. <clears throat> Nothing creepy about that at all. If they try anything, I'll take the two on the left. We're gonna we're we're gonna have a melee time. So as she approaches, mm -hmm. you would put her just a hair over five feet tall. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how tall that is in European units. It's like a meter 45, a meter 50, I think. Meter 51. And she has a very short, almost pixie type haircut. It is jet black hair. And she has that Latino skin tone that people around the world are jealous of and spend their time in the sun trying to attain for themselves. And her suit is a very professional, solid, concrete gray color. Muy buenos dias, señores y señoras. I take it you are here for the job. I'm here to get paid for probably killing someone, yeah. Hammer nods. Uh, if, you weren't, uh, if you weren't here for the job, I think we wouldn't be, we'd be dead by now. So, yeah. She'll smile. Well, you probably you. would be. <laughs> bueno. Vamos para hablar. Uh, you may enter in here, the... Uh, the edificio, the, the building. And she will turn and she will walk away and you can hear that 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 slight echo from her heels driving into the, the concrete. But she will lead her way back into the hangar. The guards will spread, uh, kind of like the opening the way, like the parting of the Red Sea, but instead of a Red Sea, it's submachine guns. Uh, we would obviously follow. So the four of you come in. There is a fold-out table that is set up uh, there is, believe it or not, a small coffee maker sitting there. Uh, there are some uh, styrofoam cups and some, you know, fake artificial sweeteners and little wooden stir sticks. And she'll gesture with one hand to it. You may serve yourself. Yeah, um, I'm good. Pen's going for it. Just straight for the coffee. Yep. <laughs> hey, Pen, do me a favor and give me a perception check, please. You may use a visual spec if you so desire. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, then. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nothing bad could happen from zero hits on ten dice. Yep, nope, this is fine. So, you walk over, and uh, it, it actually smells quite nice. Doesn't smell like a stuffer shack at all. It smells like coffee, if you will. Ooh. I will pour myself a cup of coffee. And... I also have an olfactory booster. It smells like delicious coffee to you. <laughs> smells like really delicious coffee to you. Like, notice I'm not saying soy calf. It smells like coffee. 
Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nice. Hammer pulls from a pocket of his coat something that looks at first like an enormous thermos, but then he tosses it on the ground and it unfolds into a chair. Nice. Huh. All right, so Hammer is the only person who actually has a chair. D-Boss, do you go for coffee? Do you just keep standing around? What would you like to do, sir? I'm waiting for this meeting to start. I'm not touching the coffee. This is creepy enough as it is. Go into the whole X-Files. I don't need an abduction room here. It's just a hangar. There's nothing bad that's ever happened at a secluded airport hangar at four in the morning. Come on. With all this light? So notice Mrs. Johnson does not have the doors closed, so you can still see outside to that, that beautifully illuminated helicopter that's just sitting right there. And she will look for between the four of you, and especially to Hez, who is now seated in a chair, and she just gives him sort of a quizzical stare. I suppose you can tell that I am your Mrs. Johnson for tonight. See, si. You have yeah, come, yeah. You have come very, very well recommended to me. And I need you to recover an item that was taken from a place of business. What do you want back? She will uh, tap her. She has a data jack that you can see, and she'll tap it, and she'll gesture to everybody. Can you see the things that are artificial? Mm -hmm. uh, como se dice, uh, aere, uh, augmented reality. Yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. uh, she will look yeah, at us. She'll turn her head and look at one of the bodyguards and she'll nod. And he does a little gesture in AR. And basically a pelican case will appear in AR just floating in the middle of the, of the area between you and Mrs. Johnson. Uh, this is a case that was taken from a place of business and it needs to be returned to me within three days. Okay. How long ago was it stolen? She will very slowly extend her left arm, and you can see that she's wearing a real watch on her wrist. And she'll turn her wrist, and she will look at it. 56 minutes ago. You know who took it? Her eyebrow will go up ever so slightly. These people do not exactly have numbers, uh, names. But we have an idea. You know, Mrs. Johnson, like most people, when they're, when they're silenced, they'll fidget. She is absolutely still. Like, there is no movement coming from her body. Yeah. Oh, she has a tremor dampener or something? Of course she does. Yeah, it's good shit. No, she's an adept who, she's an adept who took the, the freaking stillness power. Or that. Oh, just, just so you know, the only time I bust out adept Johnson's is when it's a high threat or more, because uh, that's a whole level of bullshittery I try not to bring out if I don't have to. <laughs> All right, so she doesn't know that. Uh, well, I mean, until she gives more info, I guess the most important thing right now is money. We want to know how much we're going to get paid. Ah, uh, yes, payment. It's always about New Yen, is it not? Why the fuck wouldn't it be? Hey, Ben, give me another perception check, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, and roll me a composure check at a minus two, if you would be so kind. <laughs> oh, boy. It's fine. Don't oh worry boy. about it. <laughs> Nothing bad ever comes from that. No. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. You, you manage, as you're taking a sip of coffee, you notice something about Mrs. Johnson, and you, you almost spit that delicious coffee out, but you catch it at your teeth at the last second. Uh, she's wearing a caduceus a pin on her lapel, the kind of thing that medical practitioners would wear. Mm. Pointedly stare at the coffee. Oh, someone jacked the kidney. Oh, no. Mm -mm. No, I hate doctors. <laughs> so I take it the four of you would be able to locate this case and return it to me. See? Well, given the truncated time period, the fact that we're going against fairly, from what we've heard, a experienced and violent team that uh, managed to steal it from you, that's not gonna be. It's not gonna be a cheap thing to do. I am willing to pay you each, cada uno, ten thousand million. 
you are welcome to discuss amongst yourself. You do not have to pretend that you do not have the, and she'll tap her data jack again. Is there any extra if we ice whoever took it? The satisfaction of ridding the world of mistakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're just going to stare dead pan and be like, right. She will, uh, as you guys are, are sitting there looking at her, she'll gesture to the bodyguard that did the stuff in the AR, and he'll nod his head, and he'll do more hand wavery. And in front of you will pop up effectively a video screen again, an AR. It's not a physical video screen, but an AR, like a video player, will pop up, and it has the big triangle on it for play. Once we have an agreement, I believe you will want to witness the video of what happened. All right, so we're D and I. It's be like, um, if you guys want to haggle for more cash, go right ahead. That's not really my jam. Sorry, Hammer. She's only going to talk to you in her set. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Hammer. Just as long as she doesn't go into like super complex topics, you'll you'll be okay to get by. Like if it's just chit chat kind of stuff. Uh huh. Don't worry. Once you start discussing the technical aspects of our entry plan, we'll do so in Orzette. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you, you fully understand when she's talking about the doors. When you get to like the, to the door knob itself, that's when we might need some dice rolls on your dice pools. But <laughs> for now, you're good. You're, you guys are just in chit-chat territory. I mean, yeah, uh, Ringside is not someone who can really uh, negotiate very well. She is the bare minimum for an elf, which is an average human. Uh, <laughs> so we don't have much there. Sorry, buddy. I said Johnny Bench over there is out. Uh, who else? I do know it's just us want to be the one talking to the Johnson. Uh. All right, well, then Ringside would just pull their arms and be like, you're offering 10K to take out dudes who jacked some shit from you. You got a bunch of guys here. I guess they're the ones who got embarrassed. That's not a lot of money for, uh, you know, it's going to be a team or some shit. I mean, we'll take them down. No problem. Look at this fucking guy. And she'll kind of nod at Hammer and be like, uh, but we're going to need some actual money here. So what would you be asking for to locate only three, and she'll silently count to four as she points at each of you, only <laughs> three individuals who have a simple, tiny case? I mean, three. Indi- I, you're, you're saying three individuals. I knew, th- I, knew, I knew three guys in prison who could fucking annihilate anyone who came at them. So, I don't, so the number don't really matter. And if they were in prison, clearly they did so well when the law enforcement came at them. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe tell us a little bit more about about these three individuals. And her eyes do that slightly glazed over. You you know she's discussing something in DNI. <sighs> and she'll look at the same guy who's been doing all the AR work, and she'll slightly nod her head, and then do like a slight no kind of shake. And three images will pop up. Uh, the first looks almost like a like an anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic uh, dinosaur. Uh, it is clearly somebody who has had heavy, heavy modifications done to their body. Uh, but he has horns, like a complete ring of horns going around the top of his head, going along almost like a mohawk down his back. Uh, you can see them coming off of his forearms. And the position that he's in, he's in like a half crouch with uh, very large claws on his hands. Not like uh, like velociraptor claws, but like those blunt, I'm designed for digging holes kind of claws. These, oh, right, okay. The second image looks like... Um, the only way to put it is if you took an elf and you stretched them an extra foot and a half taller and you made them drop 60 pounds and then you put snake scales and a forked tongue on them, that's about the best way you can describe this person. Uh, literally looks to be to weigh maybe 105 pounds total, but stands about seven feet tall and just has that, that willowy thin frame that you would expect from something serpent-like. And the last person is, is the real freak of the group. Looks like might have been either a, like a, a, a dwarf human maybe, or possibly a, like a, a dwarf dwarf, like a, like a midget human or like a regular dwarf. You really can't tell because the body proportions are very strange. Uh, arms and legs are incredibly short and skinny, but he has a fat tummy. And his head is probably three times the size of a normal metahuman skull. Piece of shoot. Great, we're going after some fucking splicers. I mean, these seems are... like these are going to stand out. And yet you doubt your own abilities to find them. Look, 
look, look, when you're freaks like this, you know how to hide. Because if you don't hide, some someone's going to turn you into paste. 20K. What? I, I will be waiting for a reasonable offer. <laughs> uh, 15. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, Simon. I was going to go close to like 12 or 14. You got to go uh, big. That's all she knows. Got to go big. Um, I believe she's negotiating in a fair and good faith. 20K is a little much for just three people. Even as dangerous as they are, dangerous enough to steal something from this incredibly powerful and important woman with all these bodyguards and keep a, and, and money to defend her stuff with. And these, these people must have been super violent and, and very capable. I'd say 12, maybe hmm, 14. I got paid 14K to simply ensure that somebody lost a game. There were no risks to anybody. I'd prefer 15 or 16. Now, Penn, just something to keep in mind is this this uppity doctor bitch has just been, she's been kind of rude to you all. I mean, I, it's that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing that just gets under your skin. She's sitting there in that expensive suit. There's a half million New Year in helicopter sitting right outside, and and she's talking down to you people. I mean, she came to you to, to hire somebody for a job, and now she's saying you're not worth the money that you want. I mean, how do how do you feel about that? You could definitely afford the 20K a piece. You know, that's the one thing that she's actually her her eyebrows have narrowed just a little bit, and her mouth seems to be at a slightly tighter kind of fit. <clears throat> Are you enjoying the coffee? Not so much anymore. It's quite good. We we didn't drink any because we're not getting poisoned. <laughs> never drink, never drink or eat of the meat until after the negotiation is done. So Miss Johnson will. Her eyes do that glazed over thing, and then she actually looks for almost a second, she looks angry. And she'll flip her hand. <sighs> Three days, you return the case, and you kill all of them. You bring me evidence they are dead. Their heads work? She shrugs. Do you have genetics on them? Blood samples. And the moment you start, you, you're asking that, her eyes go wide and she will turn around and she will start walking away immediately. All of the security that's present will raise their weapons. So you guys are undercover by six submachine guns right now. Oh. Well, let's see uh, what, what's, what happens if it looks like they're going to pull the trigger. Because uh, if they are, we're going to have a time. I don't mention the B word, apparently. Um, we weren't expecting, I wasn't actually expecting 20K. Or I was actually expecting to talk us down and, you know, meet us in the middle somewhere, but okay. Now, nah, man, we start talking about ritual samples. That freaks people out. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, boy. I mean, she's speaking Spanish, so she might be as a blind as they had a ritual sample. I don't think they'd be calling us. I, I I I assume we'll soon see. Can I roll etiquette to say something like say something conciliatory? <laughs> so are you guys just going to sit there and wait? You have six submachine guns pointed at you. Uh, Mrs. Um, Johnson is standing on the other side of the hangar. And you can tell she's having a very angry DNI conversation. She's talking very much with her hands. Oh my God, Hammer, what's going on here? Hammer sets his suitcase in his lap. Um, I am kind of making sure my smoke grenade that's in my pocket is ready to go. Are right, making a deal here or not, lady? Come on. She will hold you want up your her, shit. She just hands. holds up a hand. Oh my god, I hate these deals. 
This is why you always got to bring more strapped dudes. From the other side of the hangar, she will actually, like, not yelling, like yelling, yelling, but just raising her voice to be heard. Have any of you been to Africa? Hell no. Nope. No. Never. No. Okay, is anybody lying, or are we all telling the truth here? I'm I'm telling the truth in Africa. I'm telling the truth. Y'all up and then prison. That's where I've been. Redmond? Redmond kid? I, I mean, I think the only time Hammer's been off the continent was uh, around a couple of weeks, like last week. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Sure. Uh, what about Pickett? Pan? does, <laughs> though. <laughs> no, I thought we were doing this experience. Johnson, you must have talked us down from 20K, you know? That's just. Went back and forth. So what about Penn? Has Penn ever been to Africa? When she was like five. Because her parents went a lot of places with her. (laughs) Miss Johnson will walk back. I will pay you 12,000 each. Do you accept the job? Brinks, I would look at the others and then just kind of shrug. Yeah. This is one of those deals where uh, one one side's leveraging their strengths. That happens. I'm good at 12K. Sure. 12K and another pot of this coffee when we're done. There's so many ways I love his. <laughs> How drugged is the coffee? <laughs> like I would ever you do that. Should I... Look, man, I've poisoned the coffee before. It's fine. <sighs> okay, this just happened. And she will wave her hands. And you could actually tell she's doing the AR herself rather than having an assistant do it. Uh, the submachine guns are very slowly lowering. Um, anybody who's really paying attention will notice that they get lowered from pen last. Uh, the video is uh, a shaky, like a comlink video of a small helicopter, like a cargo-style helicopter, uh, that is banking heavily into a turn at very low altitude, and what appears to be a striker missile hits it at the tail rotor and causes it to go into a flat spin and detonate when it hits the ground. All right. It seems you are in luck because their means of leaving Seattle is no longer flight-worthy. Oh, I see. Fuckers got shot down. You want us to run their asses down? No, they were not on the helicopter yet. The helicopter was going to pick them up. The helicopter only had a pilot, a pilot, and she will look very pointedly at Penn, who happened to be from Africa, specifically from Etho, Somalia. Is that supposed to mean anything to me? Just Ethiopia and Somalia merged to become one country in the future. No, 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 that was in care. She just shrugs. Of all the people that have been to Africa, I only see one sitting here. To be, to be fair, Africa is a pretty big continent. I mean, odds are you're going to run into somebody where, that's been to Africa. I mean, we are at an airport. <sighs> Fine. And then she will do a big sweeping gesture, and she'll gather up uh, all the icons that she had displayed in AR. I suppose you have a chip, or do I need to provide you that as well? No, I got that. And she will send all of the files over to Drakmore. Okay. I will allow you, and she'll look at her watch again, four minutes to review this. And then she will back up and make another DNI call, and she will leave you guys alone for exactly four minutes. Shit. So if we review the video we have, could we make a perception check to see if there's anything in there that's not immediately obvious? Uh, you are welcome to do so if you like. So everybody can roll uh, visual with a, uh, or excuse me, perception with a visual spec. Um, if you have E-War with sensor operations, you can roll that if you like. Uh, even if you have a searching spec, you can roll that as well. What if you just have E-War? Sure, I'd let that go, because it, it, this is all based on the camera footage, for, uh, which falls under sensor operations, which is an E-War function. Good God. Tetrachromatic overpowered. 
Tetvision, yo. Tetvision's amazing. Oh, God, for the money, it is the, it gives the what, best. Like plus three? Plus three. It's great. But you can't get it with Cyber Eyes, so you have to make the choice. Cyber Nose is best money for two pairs of money. Yeah, but you can put, like, glasses with vision uh, enhancement on it. Three, and you get, like, plus six. Yeah, so you have both. I mean, it's better if you already have low light or thermal from your meta. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you pop up the, uh, there's a file that's actually tagged uh, with like the a red triangle with an exclamation mark that you can tell is just that super high priority sort of tag on it. Uh, and when you hit play on it, it begins uh, just staring at in the hallway of a very sterile standard office tile floor, like yeah, I guess you could call it a lab. Uh, but it just has that, that corridor look. And there is a person in a white coat who's walking, talking to another person in a white coat. And all of a sudden, there is arterial spray on the wall. And the uh, the first person who was talking is still just walking. Like, you could tell he heard nothing, he saw nothing. But the guy next to him is holding his throat as all this blood just fountains out of him. Uh, he finally looks his head up. And you can actually see in the footage his pupils get big, or at least uh, ringside can with six hits. Um, right before his intestines just spill out. And as you're watching the footage, you can see the, uh, the that snake-like serpent woman uh, has literally just disemboweled this guy. All right. Um, All right, we got to watch out for that one. The footage continues with the, uh, the, the big, big, huge thing with all of the horns, the dinosaur-looking guy, um, as he goes up to the body that had, uh, had its throat slit. Uh, he actually leans down, and as you're watching, you can see it licks the blood off of the floor, looks back, and shakes its head like in a negative, and then they start walking further down the hallway. Oh, he's got the thing, Yauk. Uh, and this happens over and over, where they just disappear from the footage. Like, like snap your fingers, they do not exist anymore. And then there'll just be a lone person in a in a break room or in the hallway or in one of the offices, and they're just, you know, either slit with, like, like, like razor-clean cut, or one poor guy, you just see his face cave in, and suddenly the dinosaur guy is standing there. Uh, and with each person that gets killed, they'll actually, both of them will lean down, and they'll, they'll start sniffing, and then the, specifically the dinosaur guy, he keeps licking the blood. And he seems to be getting angrier and angrier with each person that gets killed. Uh, they finally get up to a door that has a very large maglock pad on the side. And you can tell this is one of the uh, like the biometric style where put your eye up to the thing, put your thumb on the thing, slot your card, put in a password, the, uh, the super high security stuff. Mm -hmm. And they, the, the snake woman and the dinosaur guy, they look what appears to be off camera for a second. And then they'll both reach forward, and suddenly they're holding these long, flat bars, which they will put up around the maglock and around the door. And then they'll start running down the hallway, and then there's an explosion. Uh, and they're basically breaching charges. And the door just comes straight off of the wall. They go in, they clean up the uh, the people that are inside the lab. And, and as you go, the footage is basically, you can tell somebody did a quick edit to follow them mm -hmm. throughout here. Uh, and a lot of times they just seem to appear from nowhere. And then they'll disappear after they kill someone or after they, they rip open a door, especially after the charge. Um, the thing that's weird is when the footage from inside that final room, when the door explodes, the people who are working, like they, they kind of grab their desk, but they look around like, what was that? Um, which is just kind of a weird, you would think with the door exploding, everybody would turn toward the door, but they just look around like, what the hell just happened? And then it turns into absolute carnage as they're just getting disemboweled and the dinosaur guy is pulling limbs off of bodies. Uh, and it takes less than a minute, but the four people that were inside that room are just completely shredded into pieces. Did we get to see what Mintok is doing? Or uh, Murdoch, the uh, walking head? The, the giant skull guy? You have not actually seen him yet. He's probably the one recording. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No. This is, I, I should have clarified that all of the footage is from like the security cameras that are installed throughout the oh, building. Oh, okay. So this is all from like, right. top down uh, angle or, you know, over in the corner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was my fault. 
Okay. Somebody probably cast a silent spell. Silence or, or uh, some illusions to make the door not look like it's explodes, shit like that, yeah. But it's after all the bodies are taken care of, you see that the snake woman specifically, like her tongue is, is just constantly flipping out over and over and over. And then she finally shakes her head up and down and points at the wall. And there's one of those cryo storage, like basically refrigerators that you have in a lab. It's not like a standard mini fridge, but it has the cool blue LEDs inside just because it makes everything science fiction-y. And that's when all of a sudden the cranium guy just appears out of nowhere. And he'll walk up and he manipulates something on the front. You can tell it's like a, a touch pad for a password. And then the door will open and he will reach in and he will take a container. It looks almost like a six pack of soda. Like there's, there's six individual jar type things. Uh, if you would like to make another perception check, I might be able to tell you what's in there. But he will take those and he will place them in the pelican case that you saw in the image that Mrs. Johnson had shown you. They had a dock wagon facility? No, there's nothing you've seen that makes you think it's dock wagon, but it does look like some kind of medical something. All right. Um, was this file data bombed or encrypted in any way? No, 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 no. Um, she didn't say not make a copy of it. I'm sorry, say uh, that one more time. She didn't say not to make a copy of it. Nope, she sent you uh, the files. That's for you to do with what you will. All right, sure, okay. So you, you just had, I had implied that we were only going to be able to watch this once and she was going to take it away from us in four minutes. No, she just said you have four minutes to review it. That was basically all that she put it. She wasn't implied. She wasn't saying okay. she'd take it away, but you have four minutes, basically. Okay. Okay. Make a copy just in case. Uh, D-Boss and Ringside, uh, looking at the little jar thingies they almost kind of look like tiny baby things kind of you're not really ringside you don't really have okay. the knowledge skills required to, to understand what it is oh embryos or something yeah out of character yes that's kind of what it looks like but not like a very much out of character it looks almost like a human embryo but something's weird about it okay uh, is, is, is is the case that he's taking the case she wants recovered? Yes, he placed those okay. things into the case. Into the uh, case. And when he closed the... It's like a pelican case, like an armored case. When he closed it, a little light turned on by the handle that was blue, and then it went to green. On uh, a cryo case, yeah. Okay. And so nobody used any weapons. It was just their bare, they barehanded it through this That's, whole place. You did not see it outside of what was part of their body like the, the snake woman had claws on her hands and mm -hmm. the, the big guy with all the horns like he you know he almost like he was so studded with horns along his forearms that it almost looked like rock but like as for like firearms or axes or anything like that no absolutely not now the weird part is once they had the case big dinosaur guy is carrying the case the uh the person with the gigantic head is walking in front of them and they're walking down a hallway, and it's a very, these are big futuristic office buildings. They're wide hallways. They all sort of lean to the right as the security team runs just straight past them. And the three of them literally walk out the front door. All right. So, so, yeah. All right. Whoever that fucking giant head man is, he dies first. I don't want him trying to fuck with my head. What do you think? Definitely yeah. looks like the magic damage first. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta hate those people. Problem is, mm -hmm. and and a shulk and hammer, they can never take a punch, can they? I don't know, man. Skills like this, this ain't just so. They ain't just fucking some street thugs who got themselves spliced up to look like fucking dragons and shit. These guys are probably fucking pros, you know, like dark fucking NSA CIA project shit. So at exactly four minutes, uh, Mrs. Johnson will walk back to you. And she says, well, do you still believe you can perform this job? Yeah. I th yeah. In fact, I think we were kind of right asking for 15K. Mm -hmm. I will make you a deal. You bring, it, you bring the case back with everything viable within 48 hours, and I'll pay you 15K, as you put it. Okay. Well, let's get to work. Would you like right, to... Solid. Have Sorry. she? This is like the first time she seems to stutter over her words a little bit. Do you need to witness the place where it happened? 
I mean, it would be helpful if any of us had some magical tracking capabilities. I uh, look at everybody else. Because it's only been an hour. Hmm. I mean, if you guys can, I don't know, waggle your fingers, do some magical spirit bullshittery, and track the guy's actual signature or something, whatever it's called, um, that could be a possibility. I can't do that. I kill dudes, man. I don't do that magic bullshit. Um, Over the and I, uh, I can sort of see magic things, but I can't really do much with it. So, maybe? All right, well, I mean, I mean, there's other ways to check them out. Uh, uh, yeah, I've, I have some ideas. I'm sure other people do. We can finish up here and then look into that. Probably. Uh, over to you and I. Ben, do you want us to go to the place or not? Uh, it can't hurt. All it'll cost us is a little bit of time, right? I guess. Was your matrix, uh, was your matrix security breached in any way when this happened? Were you able to find any evidence of that? She very slowly shakes her head. No. Okay. I didn't think so. Given how much magic they were using. All right. So you were in agreement you would like to investigate where this happened? Yeah, sure. Fuck it. Why not? They might have dropped some. Someone there, and any any of the sec team might have seen something. I know. I know. I know. I know. Once a mage tried that shit on me, I saw right through it. Broke both his legs. She will nod her head, and then she will do that weird D and I thing where she's not focused on you. And the moment her eyes seem to refocus, you'll notice the uh, the main rotor on the helicopter slowly starts to turn as it starts to spin up. Very well. We can have you there in approximately nineteen minutes. And she will gesture to the helicopter. Okay. Uh, Hammer will stand up, and his seat will go back to being a little thermos, which he puts in his coat pocket. Nice. Same deal for us, but our thermos is smaller. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. All right, so is everybody going to board the helicopter? Mm Mm-hmm. 